Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, <laughs> we're making a catapult. Psst. Hey, get your kids in the shop with you? No? Then go get them because we're doing another kids day today, guys. Last week on the show, we did that tic-tac-toe marble game, and I had such a good time uh, playing around with that and making that project that I thought this week we're going to do another one. And what we're going to do is a simple catapult. We're going to make it out of scrap pine, and well, you know what? Let's stop talking and get over to the bench and start making this thing. Well, the first part of our simple catapult will be this and it's a three quarter inch thick piece of pine it is an inch and a half wide and it is 12 inches long this will actually be our firing rod our the part that flings the the ammunition so at an inch and a half we're going to mark a center line here up at the top just like that and we're going to put a mark at three quarters of an inch down. And once we get that mark, there it is. My eyes are failing me. We're going to center punch that and drill a one and a quarter inch diameter Forstner bit hole three eighths of an inch deep. <laughs> Well, the next thing that you want to do is three inches down from the top on the three quarter side centered on the three quarter we're going to drill a three eighths through hole we're going to do the exact same thing from this end at a measurement of three quarters of an inch up from the bottom <laughs> And now we can just give this piece a good sanding all over. We want to take off some of those sharp corners, especially if there's going to be a young one playing with this. Well, the next thing that you're going to need is two pieces of dowel that are going to be three eighths of an inch in diameter and four and a half inches long. And all I'm going to do is we're going to glue them into those holes that we just made so that they're centered on the board. So in other words, we need an inch and a half sticking out on either side. So I'll just line this up over a bench dog hole here and spin it into place. And I've got a mark on that dowel at an inch and a half to show me where to stop it. And we'll just clean up the squeeze out here. And then we'll double check our measurement. And that's good. We have an inch and a half on that side and an inch and a half on this side. So we can do the exact same thing now with our other piece of dowel. And we'll just double check. That looks good. And we'll just clean up our squeeze out. So that is this piece here completed. And we can sit this off to the side now and let it dry up and move on to some of our other pieces of our catapult. Well, we have some more scrap pine, and the next thing that we're going to need is two pieces that are an inch and a half wide, they're three quarters of an inch thick, and they'll be six inches long. Thank you. 
And the last piece to make will be the base. And for that, we're using three quarter inch pine again. And we're gonna cut this to a dimension of three and a half inches wide and eight inches long. Well, our next step will be to place a notch in each one of these front corners that will house our uprights. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a measurement here. So if you remember, our uprights were one and a half inches. So we'll place that mark there. And they are three quarters of an inch wide. And we will just take that over to the table saw and I'll cut those two notches out. We can take our base piece and just put it aside for now. We're going to come back to that in just a minute, but we need to work on our uprights now. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a mark three quarters of an inch down from the top and centered on the inch and a half side. So half of an inch and a half is three quarters of an inch. And you guys know that I like to go from both sides just in case. Oh, these ones are good, but at three quarters of an inch down and centered on the inch and a half, I'm going to drill a through three eighths hole. So just to ensure that the holes are in the exact same place, I am, I'm using a stop block and the fence in order to keep them the same. Well, now the next hole that we have to drill, we've already got our fence set so that it will drill the center of our board. So we just need to measure from the top down four inches, and then we're going to drill a through 7 16 diameter hole. And that is all the preparation that is needed um, for the upright pieces or the base. So we're just going to give these a good sanding and then we can get to the assembly. Well, the assembly starts with our first piece here. This is our propulsion piece. I don't even know what you call it. I'm sure it has a name. Uh, <laughs> tell me the name in the comments if you know it, because I don't. But that piece goes into our 7 16 hole down at the bottom. So it's a very loose fit, and it's supposed to be. Once you get that sat in there, we're going to place our uprights into our notches, and we're going to glue them and clamp them into place. that and once we get that into place like that we're just going to clamp it in there
Now, I've said it before, you can turn a real great project into a real hack project in about 2.2 seconds by allowing your squeeze out just to sit there. So get yourself some cotton swabs and some clean water and just clean up the squeeze out that's come out of the joint here. You know, it's even if it's just a toy or a catapult or whatever, you still need to take a bit of pride in it. And now our next step that we need to do, if you remember, we cut three of these dowels. So this one is going to get installed in our top holes here. And we will allow it to protrude beyond the ends at an equal distance. I'm not exactly sure what that distance is. Uh, I think it's a half an inch because the base was three and a half inches wide. These were four and a half. So let's do a dry fit and we can see what it is that it sticks out here. And that looks about even, and yes, it is half an inch. So there you go. So glue this dowel here into place so that it sticks out half an inch on either side, and then let the whole thing dry and set up. Well, I've decided that I want to do one more step, and what I would like to do is I want to add some support dowels into these uprights. I don't really like this glue joint, just the glue joint. So all I'm gonna do is I have a depth stop set on the drill bit. Um, I have it set for an inch and a half and I'm gonna drill some quarter inch holes here and then uh, insert or hammer in some quarter inch maple dowels. just apply a little bit of glue here to the dowel and now we'll clean up the squeeze out and we'll do the exact same thing to the other side Well, I've cut the dowels flush here and they need a bit of sanding, but <clears throat> I can do that when we sand the rest of the catapult. This, my friends, with the exception of a couple missing pieces, is done. Um, so let's give this a really good sanding and then come back and see me. We're gonna finish the assembly and then we're gonna take her for a test spin. Well, for the last step of the assembly, you need a couple of rubber bands. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hang one rubber band off of each of these posts here, and then they get stretched down to the top dowel that protrudes, just like that. And this is the way it sits. And all you need to do now is just load it up and let her go. So what do you load it up with? Well, I've got some ping pong balls. Okay, so I have no idea how this is gonna work, but I have some of these bright orange ping pong balls. I have this clamped down in my vise at this end. I don't think you need to clamp it down. You can just hold it with your hand. Just, I'm holding a handful of ping pong balls here, plus filming. The more hands free I can do, the better. So essentially all you do is you put your ping pong ball in that little hole that we drilled there. You pull her back and let her rip. <laughs> okay, that was awesome. Okay, let's try it again. Pull her back and let her rip. <laughs> okay, what, what if we put stronger Stronger rubber bands. Oh, that, let's, let's try that. Stronger rubber bands. Hang on. Okay, so I've got these thicker rubber bands. I don't know how well this is going to work. Well, wow, that's got a lot of tension on it. This could be really cool or this could be really disastrous. Oh, okay, there's a lot of force behind this. All right, boys, let's give it a try. Here we go. Stronger rubber bands. Fire one! Woo! <laughs> yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Okay, stronger rubber bands are the winner. Look at that. Fire two! Woohoo! <laughs> Ding! <laughs> 
Oh, I could do this all day. All right. Stronger rubber bands for the win. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, okay, I'm keeping this for myself. And there you have it, a catapult. Guys, oh my goodness, what a load of fun. I am looking forward to playing with this. Uh, you know what, I might just play with it all on my own. I don't need kids to play with this stuff. Are you kidding me? This is spectacular. Um, it's a lot of fun to make and truth be told scrap material pine I mean it's dirt cheap and on top of that I think uh, if I wasn't filming I probably could have banged one of these off in about a half an hour um, with the filming and everything it took a couple hours but there's a lot of bumping around with the camera and stuff like that why pine <clears throat> okay uh, could you make it out of maple? Yeah, 100%. Could you make it out of walnut or anything else like that? Yeah, of course you could. The reason I chose pine, and you may notice that I chose I choose pine for a lot of my children's projects, is because if there's one job that we have in the hobby of woodworking that I would say 80% of people absolutely hate, it's sanding. And if you want to turn a child off of woodworking like that, get them to sand forever. Um, they'll, they'll just back away from the hobby like there's no tomorrow because sanding is dull. It doesn't produce anything. They're too young to understand why they do it. But with pine, it's a very soft wood. It is very forgiving. And because of that, the sanding that they have to do is minimal, and yet it shows them the importance of sanding because with pine being so, um, so forgiving, it yields great results very quickly. So the children learn that sanding is an important part of it, and as time goes on, um, they realize, you know what, that's just the way it is. You gotta sand your projects. Guys, you've got to give this one a try. If you have young people that uh, are in your family and you want to introduce them to something and show them how much fun they can have with a hobby, this is the project for you. I am telling you. I love this thing <laughs> and I'm in my 50s. Um, this is absolutely spectacular. I can't say enough about how spectacular this is. Simple as all get up, but man, is it effective and a load of fun. You can adjust your firing power, as you could see, with the different um, size elastic bands. The bigger, stiffer ones give one a heck of a wallop, while the other ones are, ah, they just kind of lob it. And for the younger children, that may be the way to go. You do want to be very careful that they don't get their little fingers nipped in here when this thing is shooting because that would hurt like heck. But with a little bit of adult supervision, I don't see any reason why the kids couldn't have an absolute blast for this. Heck, set up a laundry basket over in the corner and get them to practice trying to aim it and lob the ping pong balls into the laundry basket. Two points a ball and see who gets the most points by the end of it. They get to learn a little bit of math, get to have a little bit of fun, and uh, you know what, time well spent with the children. Guys, I hope you've t enjoyed today's program. I hope you've enjoyed this project. Um, I know I've had a lot of fun with it, especially shooting it. So if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe and click that bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. Guys, I really want to thank you for stopping by the channel and joining me here today. And I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.